For more on the Knicks, we welcome in CP, the franchise. And CP, there was so much conversation before game one about playoff experience, but Josh Hart looked like a grizzled postseason vet in game one. How many different ways did he impact that Knicks victory? So many different ways, Eamon. And as you mentioned, when Josh Hart met with the media before this series started, he said he didn't need much advice on how to play in the playoffs. And I think that's because his game is tailor-made for the playoffs. And specifically in the Knicks game one win, he was all over the map, starting off with good defense on Darius Garland. He had 10 rebounds, five of which came on the offensive side. So 17 of the Knicks offensive boards, five came from Josh Hart, and that led to 23 second chance points. I thought he attacked well, both in, fa in the fast, court, fast break and also in the half court, both as a playmaker and as a finisher. And then lastly, how about the big clutch three that he hit with two minutes and 12 seconds left in the fourth quarter with the Knicks trailing by one after turning his ankle and then after that securing a tough defensive rebound. Josh Hart was all over the court for the Knicks and certainly uh, the player of the game in their game one victory. Yeah, and as you mentioned, two of his biggest plays when he was not at 100% down the stretch. All right, Cleveland made an adjustment in the second half by having 6'7", Chetty Osman guard Jalen Brunson. How should Tom Thibodeau counter that? Yeah, Jalen Brunson shot three of eight against Chetty Osmond, and Osmond did a commendable job on, on Brunson after Isaac Okoro had left that game, and look, what Tom Thibodeau tried to do was, is what we've seen the Knicks try to do against the Cavaliers in the regular season, which is try to get the smaller guards like Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland to switch on the pick and roll so that Brunson can have more of an advantage, but... If, if Brunson can't shake Osmond, then he's going to have to take him. And that's what he did. Jalen Brunson was super clutch in the final five minutes of this game, scoring four out of the last five Nick field goals, nine points in the fourth quarter. It seems like when crunch time comes, it really doesn't matter what the Cavs will put out there because Jalen Brunson will find a way to get it done. All right, so now the Knicks winning game one saved R.J. Barrett from taking a lot of heat because he struggled mightily. CP, how short a leash should Tibbs have with Barrett in game two? The thing about R.J. Barrett is that he has to continue to impact winning. Even though his shots did not fall in their game one victory, he still had six assists, he had four steals, and his defense was pretty solid in this game. However, we did see that in crunch time in the fourth quarter, after a costly turnover led to Cleveland points, Tom Thibodeau did go to the bench and put Quentin Grimes into the game. And so if R.J. Barrett is not able to knock down those shots, then the Knicks will have to rely on their depth at the guard rotation. That means Emmanuel quickly, Quentin Grimes, Josh Hart will see those minutes to finish those games. Yeah, earning your coach's trust in the postseason is completely different than earning it in the regular season. All right, CP, let's look ahead. What are your keys for game two? I've got four keys, Amen. Number one, the theme of game two is going to be weather the storm. Game two of a seven-game series in the NBA playoffs is always the hardest for the winner of game one to win. Why? Because the losing team is going to come out with a sense of urgency. They will be aggressive. They will have the crowd on their side and also believe they will get the benefit of the whistle. So the Knicks are going to have to weather that early onslaught from this Cleveland Cavaliers team. You have to expect a more aggressive play from a Darius Garland, maybe an Evan Mobley or Jared Allen steps up or someone off of the bench like a Karis LeVert. So the Knicks are going to have to uh, stay aggressive, but also stay disciplined so that the Cavs onslaught does not take them out of their game. Secondly, I think the Knicks need to, to try to shoot the three ball a lot more efficiently than they did in game one. In game one, they only shot the three at 26%. Now they were able to get the 23 second chance opportunities, but the, but if the Cavs adjust and keep the Knicks off of the glass, then they're going to need to shoot the ball much more efficiently and shooting from downtown will certainly help. Third, continue to stay aggressive defensively. Donovan Mitchell is going to get his, but the Knicks have to look to secure the ball and make sure that the sec that the Cavaliers role players do not hurt them. And then lastly, the Knicks role players, you're going to look for more contributions. Emmanuel Quickly and R.J. Barrett did not shoot the ball well in this game. You can't rely on 17 points from Josh Hart in every game. That's not his game. So the Knicks supporting cast of Quickly, Barrett, and even Grimes have to step up and deliver to help them secure a victory in game two. Yeah, and back to your first key, the one thing the Knicks cannot do is exhale and say, hey, we got the game we were looking for. We can relax in game two. Game two, Tuesday night at 730, CP, the franchise. Thanks for joining us here on Honda Sports Night. Eamon, thanks a lot.